Maxwell designed Good Morning America. He's a famous actor, writer, and producer in the movie business. He's noted for creating havoc on the eastern side of the country in 1938 when he broadcast a little entertainment radio show called The War of the Worlds. And people took him seriously that the Earth was being invaded by aliens and he was just using the media in kind of a creative, clever way. He was also known for a movie called Citizen Kane. It came out in 1941. The story follows a man from very humble beginnings to a rise in power and money. And the movie ends with the word rosebud on his lips, a reminder from his childhood of a happier, less stressful time. And the movie is filled with all kinds of messages that, and may have even mirrored Orson Welles' life, his own life, in many ways. And for later generations, he was the one who pitched for a winery, making the, the line, if I had that nice deep bar baritone voice, we will sell no wine before it's time, made that popular. And so one day, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, Orson Welles was interviewed by someone on Good Morning America, that is his latest project. And they had some time to fill, so the interviewer asked him, what are your plans for Christmas? And Orson Welles replied that he was going to some faraway tropical place like Bora Bora. And the interviewer asked him, well, why? Why are you going so far away? And his response was, every year I find a place as far away as possible. A place where they've never even heard of Christmas. Because Christmas is just for children. It's just a holiday made up for kids. My heart broke in that moment. But, you know, on the one hand, isn't it about right? We give gifts to children to watch their faces light up. We put up and decorate the Christmas trees to the delight of children. And how many Christmas eats are made for children to enjoy? And it's all for children and the joy. And on the other hand, Mr. Wells missed the whole thing. Never heard or experienced the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of our Savior in his heart. Never heard the story of Jesus' birth to bring light to a darkened soul. To not sing joy in the world with joy building and bursting on his heart. How sad is that? Advent is a time to re-remember and recreate the night when Christ was born. It's a time to prepare him room, a place in our hearts where we've moved all that stuff of worry and, and pettiness out onto the side or preferably out of the picture to let Christ's love in. To retell the story, to hear it one more time, to think about the people involved again, or maybe in a fresh new way, to think about and reflect on Mary and Joseph and how they were used by God and accepted the responsibility, the gift, and the challenge presented to them. And yet, what do we really know? Three Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, provide some background to the birth of Jesus. But so much is missing. So many details are left out. So many questions still hang. And I believe they're supposed to. I watched about 10 minutes of The Masked Singer on TV the other night. They are performers who uh, sing a song, and they're dressed up in this costume that uh, totally covers them. It's a very wild, outrageous costume. And judges and the audience have to guess who the performer is. And that night, they reveal a woman famous for her performance in the musical Cats. And this outrageous costume that was being worn also contained clues as to who the performer was, if you look closely enough to find them. The clues were given, and given for a reason. Details that are important, 
that led to the mystery being solved or a masked singer being revealed. God keeps the story fresh by leaving things open for our searching and discernment to establish, yes, I believe, or no, I don't think so, or I don't know. Leaving things open, it builds and strengthens our faith. The world before Jesus' birth was living in a great darkness. Even the prophets were now silent. The messages God had told them had all come true. Destruction of the temple, exile for all the people, all of it had happened. And now it was just waiting for the Messiah. Come, thou long-expected Jesus. And they were still waiting. What would you do? Keep hoping or give up? And into this darkness comes the birth of the last of the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist, Zechariah and Elizabeth, both in their older years. And then Mary enters the picture. Who is this Mary? Well, we know that she's related to Elizabeth. We know she is young. Many scholars speculate that she's probably about 13 years old. And in an age and culture where the lifespan was about 30 to 35 years, Mary was really almost middle-aged. We know that she had an encounter with an angel called Gabriel, a messenger from God. And in an Advent study by Adam Hamilton, he makes the point that Mary was not afraid of the messenger, so he must not have been all that unusual in appearance. It was what he said that perplexed and left her wondering. Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Greetings, one who is full of grace. In my seminary, when you say, hi, how are you, to the woman who works in the mailroom, she would always answer, I am loved and blessed and special to God. The angel then has to tell Mary, do not be afraid. God wants to use you in a most magnificent way. And yet, it gets troubling to us. And we ask with Mary, how, how can it be that she will be with child? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And that's all we're told. And for many, the questions begin. But what is it that God is asking us to do here? Take a leap of faith. It's not about how Mary got pregnant, but that the power of God can do the impossible. Nothing will be impossible with God, the messenger tells her. Okay, who all thought the food pantry moving into the garage was impossible? I heard some of you say, well, we'll never have the money to do this. And who all thought, well, we just can't do this project. But we did. With God, the impossible is possible. And often it takes a leap of faith. A leap from, I don't know how this can be done, to, I believe it can happen. Jesus was born of Mary. I believe. And maybe even more fantastic, Mary said, yes, I am the Lord's servant. It was not about what she wanted, but about doing and fulfilling God's plan. Let it be to me according to your word. Yes, Lord, yes. If this was something God wanted for her, then she wanted it for God. And isn't that how our faith should be? What God wants for my life, I want too. 
when we step out in faith, and when we take a leap of faith, incredible and amazing things happen. No wonder Mary had so much to ponder in her heart. Her journey of faith went far beyond what she could ever hope for or imagine. I'm sorry, Mr. Wells, but Christmas isn't just for children. And yes, there is the joy and the delight all through the season, but it's far bigger than that. It still and always will be about Jesus Christ, God's Son coming into the world to save us from our sins. So say yes, like Mary, and enter a fantastic journey and be transformed into the people that God has created us to be. And remember the words, nothing is impossible with God. And step out in faith.